I've always given Triple G a lot of credit. And, you know, this fight is very interesting. This fight basically is somewhat a fight for legitimacy, somewhat for both guys. Now, I want to say Danny Jacobs got a little bit of legitimacy when he knocked out Peter Quillen in one round in, in emphatic fashion. Shocker. But this is the thing. I've always said that Triple G is dangerous from anywhere in that ring. He can fight a little bit on the outside. He's He can hold his own mid-range area. But his really – Strong claim to fame, I think, is his inside game. Cuts cuts the ring off beautifully, and um, you know he gets inside deep in the pocket, and he can rip the hell out of your body and come over the top with those short hooks, short right hands over the top. But this is the thing: people look at that Kell Brook fight, and they sit there and say, "Ah, oh, well, Triple G really didn't take him serious. He wasn't afraid of him. He let him do this, let him do that." Well, I don't think any fighter goes in there and says, "Hey, you know what?" I'm going to let this guy hit me tonight. I don't care. No, I think a fighter may go into a fight saying, you know what? I'm going to take some risks tonight. I'm going to fight maybe more aggressively tonight. I'm going to gamble a little bit more tonight than I normally do. But, you know, sometimes bringing that type of attitude into the ring doesn't always pan out the way you want it to pan out for you on the night, which was the case against Cal Brook. And, you know, as I said, the best, you know, your safest bet when you're fighting Triple G is try to keep him on the outside. You know, everyone he's fought, whether they've been big or what have you, even um, what's his name there, uh, Martin Murray, kind of a pretty big middleweight. But, again, he's not really an outside type fighter. He's a mid-range guy. He, you know, he likes to get up somewhat close, and he's kind of a clubber. He's he's not really a, a guy who, who throws those long shots from the outside. Kell Brook was the only opponent who really had a really, really, really good outside game. And you saw what he did. He made the fight very interesting because from the outside, he was really landing some good shots. And Triple G was vulnerable. So, the, so if you're going to beat Triple G, you got to keep him on the outside. You got to keep him at the end of, of, of some long, straight punches. Because if you let him in the wheelhouse, he's going he's gonna to eat your body alive, man. He's going to. He's going to grind you grind you into dust. Danny Jacobs, he's a guy who can keep this fight on the outside. He is six feet, 73-inch reach. He's a big, strong, quick, powerful, athletic middleweight. This is the biggest middleweight that Triple G will have faced. He's probably the hardest punching middleweight Triple G will have faced. He's the quickest middleweight Triple G will have faced. So bringing all this into the ring. And all this into the equation, this is going to be a tough, tough fight for Triple G. And add into that that he respects Danny Jacobs' power. Danny Jacobs respects his power. This is going to be a chess match for, to some degree. And you're going to actually see Danny Jacobs dictate this, this chess match from the outside. Danny Jacobs, I think, is going to box Triple G's ears off. I think he's going to box his, his ears off. I think because, you know, Daniel Jacobs is really quick on his feet. He's got really quick hands. I think Triple G is going to have a hard time getting past that long jab and that long right hand, number one. And number two, and also because Danny Jacobs is so quick on his feet and because he's so big and physically strong, he's not going to be able to cut off the ring as effectively against Danny Jacobs. And then when he gets inside, Daniel Jacobs wraps those big arms around him and freezes him up. He's going to have a hard time, I think, getting out of that clinch and Danny Jacobs can release that, that that clinch real quick and then get dart out of there or step off to the side because he's so quick on his feet. I think he's going to have a hard time pinning Daniel Jacobs down. This is going to be a tough fight for Triple G, and I think Daniel Jacobs is going to win this fight by 12-round unanimous decision because I think he's going to really dictate the pace of this fight, and he's going to dictate how this fight is going to be fought. He's going to be the ring general in there. He's going to keep this fight on the outside. And Cal Brook was doing very well. He was doing very well. But Danny, Daniel Jacobs brings, out, brings up an excellent point. What if I'm landing those same shots Cal Brook has landed? Because he's going to land something in this fight. The question is, is Triple G going to laugh? Or is he going to maybe have a, a frown on his face after getting hit by these big bombs from Daniel Jacobs? That's the question. I think he's going to have a frown. Daniel Jacobs, 12 run. Daniel Jacobs, 12 run. Your name is Decision Baby. Another yeah. upset. Yeah. Now he's worried. Lieutenant, you're worried. 
You're hurting! You see? You see? He's not a machine! He's a man!